Hey folks, Dave here. I want to thank you for stopping by and I hope everybody's well today. So we are going to make this. And I've intended to make a uh, light switch cover for some time now, but the list of items that you want to make when you have a laser is just so extensive. Uh, you just kind of got to work your way through it. And we are up to the point of light switch cover. So let's do it. We're going to start with a square and just drop out a rectangle. Click your selector tool. Uh, go up top, make sure your lock is off. And we are going to make this a width of 69.85 millimeters and that's somewhere in the neighborhood of two and three quarter inches. And the height, we're going to make 114, 300. And that is somewhere in the neighborhood of four and a half inches. So remember, you can scroll in and out with your mouse wheel. You can push down and move the entire canvas around. So we're going to go over with it selected to the Shape Properties tab. And we're just going to radius off the corners to about four. Just something to keep them from being sharp. Uh, and then, if you don't have that... Uh, shape properties tab somewhere on your page go up to a window down to shape properties and make sure there's a check mark okay so we're going to select this we're going to put a little ridge on the back uh, to make sure that the cover doesn't touch uh, anything when we uh, when we put it in so just uh, control D pull out a copy and with it selected, go over to the offset tool, make it inward, round, and three is fine. I think that'll work. And that will just go on the back. So that part's done. So now we want to make the, uh, the switch hole and the screws where the screws go. So just grab another square drop out a rectangle click your selector tool and this is um, gonna be 9.25 for width and that is about 3 8 of an inch and then the height will be 25.4 which is about an inch then we're just gonna drop that in there Shift, select the uh, cover, and then hit bullseye. Then we're going to make us some screw holes. We're going to make these, hold your shift key down, and just draw out a circle. Click your selector tool, and we're going to make these about 6 millimeter square. So in this case, you can, uh, you can turn your lock on and just... Click one of them, and that gives us about a quarter of an inch. Then we're going to select it, Control D to duplicate it, and we're going to put one there, one there, but we're going to make some tools to make sure we get them in the right place. So just grab a square. Just draw out a small square, click your selector tool, and make it a tool. And this is going to be 15.87. Uh, for the height. The width really doesn't matter. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that gives us about uh, 5 eighths of an inch. And we're going to set that here. We'll move the move that up, and we're just going to go in close, and we're going to snap right there. And I say it all the time, but if you don't have snap on, go up to settings, 
and make sure snap to object, snap to grid is on. And don't be shy about using tools. I'm using Control D to get another copy to put down here. Uh, using tools will really help you. So we're going to scroll in close. Going to grab that and snap it in. Then we're going to grab the uh, screw hole. Get on that edge and we're going to snap it to there. Then with it selected, we're going to shift, select the plate, and go to vertical alignment and center. And you can see that it moved just a little bit. And that should put it right in the right spot. I'm getting in close again. We're going to grab that one and do the same thing. Just snap to the tool, shift, select the plate go to vertical alignment and center and now this can be uh, all grouped together so just select everything and click group your uh, your tools have no output so you don't have to worry about them cutting uh, we're not going to group it to the the plate yet because we got a couple of more things we're going to do to it so once you get your uh, your base plate made, uh, you can start souping it up a little bit. You can ride on it. You can add shapes. But rather than doing it on the original that you've made, I just always grab a copy and then work with that one. And I did not grab it, did I? We got part of it. There's another part there somewhere. There we go. But now I got to line it back up again. So I'm just going to grab everything. Click center. I think we're good. And we're not going to group it together, like I said. And we're just going to, in this case, we'll just make a heart. So I'm going to grab a circle, push shift. Just draw out a circle, make it a cut, control D to pull out another one, make it look like a heart on top, select both and go to horizontal alignment and line them up. Then I'm going to grab a hexagon, push shift, draw out a hexagon. Click the selector tool. Then I'm going to hold down the control key. And you can see this little dot appear on top. And we can change the number of sides. Which you could also do over here on the uh, shape properties tab. And then we are going to flip it around. I'm pushing the comma key to rotate counterclockwise. And I'm just going to pull this up into it. And this is just a hastily made heart, so uh, don't expect miracles. But once you make one of these, uh, you can put it into your, into your art library. You just want to get snapped on the one side, and then you can work with the other one. I think we hit both sides, so I think we're good. And to make it look more like a heart, you can squish that bottom up a little bit like that. Then you can grab everything and go over to weld. And now we have a heart. And if you wanted to save that heart to your art library, and I have a video on this that I will uh, put down in the description. Just go to your um, art library. Select the item you want to save, and down here, click Import Graphic from Project. And just name it. Click OK, and there it is. So it's there. So it's there for any time you want to pull it up. So now, we are going to Control-D, duplicate that heart. 
and we're not going to change the size anymore. We're just going to rotate this a little bit. We're going to hook it into the corner there. And then we're going to grab only the heart and the plate. That's why we didn't group the uh, switch in. And then we're going to, well, you, you can go uh, weld here or you can go up to tools. Since it's two objects, it's really a union. It's not a, uh, you don't have to use weld. We can go to Boolean Assistant. And with that, you can scroll across and see what the result of each of these would be. So this is a super handy tool. So we want Union. We'll click that, click OK. And then we'll cut this other one out and be able to uh, just set it on top and give it a little more flair. Okay, let's write something on this. Uh, we will write Jane's room. And I'm going to use Academy Engraved because it uh, works really well uh, with just using a line. And from here, you really can't center anymore uh, because of the odd shape. So you just have to kind of snap it in place and hope it's centered. Or you could grab your uh, piece up here for the back. You could set that on it. You could also draw out another square. But you could set that on it. Click the lettering. And then click your back piece and then you could do a vertical alignment and there you go let me scroll back in I'm gonna duplicate that and we'll put room at the bottom looks like it centered itself but we'll check click shift and then we'll go back to vertical align Yep, it moved a little bit. And I am trying to write room, hopefully. There we go. Click the selector tool. I'm going to make this a line. Yep, a line. I think I'll make it about 60, speed of 60, and a power of 20, and that's with a 40 watt laser. And don't forget to move these up above the cut line when you have uh, engravings. Uh, you don't want to cut first, it'll make a mess out of it. And then I think we will bend these a little bit. There's a little dot right here, a little controller. If you've never seen that, just grab it. You can bend it a little bit. And if ever uh, you bend something like that, you're making a logo or something, and it doesn't look exactly centered, and that doesn't for some reason, you can grab the corners and you can bend this around a little bit more and make it where it suits your vision and you will be okay all right i'm clicking room and i'm going to do the same thing just grab it and bend it a little bit like that and whoever jane is i think she would like it now we have to make sure we get this back out of the way and I made a mess like I often do, but that's okay. We'll fix it. Then we'll pull this back. So, what we'll do is grab all of this. Since I messed up, we'll grab all of this and group it. That way, when we put it back together, we can select it, maybe, and then shift and select everything and that is not what we wanted to do that is the problem i was just talking about trying to center but that's okay we'll get there 
Don't get irritated with me, folks. I'm a newbie. Figuring this out as I go. All right, so I want to make sure this heart does not cover up any part of the name. And I think we're okay, but let's see. Yep, we'll be fine. Okay, so we need to fix that one again. And then maybe group it together this time so it don't fall apart again. Alright, so I think we are ready to jump in the laser. And... Uh, once you get something like this made, if you really don't want to have to do it over and over and over, just take your main piece or your finished piece, whatever you would like, and import from the project. Give it a name, and it's over here that you can pull back out anytime you like and use it. And I will... Uh, put a link to that uh, to that video down in the description so let's uh, let's jump into laser cut this out see how it works I'll be right back folks okay folks we are framed up and ready so let's send the code over cut this out and see what it looks like All right, well, let me clean this up, put it together, and uh, I guess check it on the wall and see if it works, and then we'll take a closer look at it. Be right back. Okay, so here's our finished light switch cover, and it turned out really well. Now, this was cut out of two millimeter basswood plywood, and here is our little piece on the back to help it get past the screws and whatever else might be around that switch but it turned out so well I think now I'm gonna do one for the shop out of this five millimeter plywood and uh, if you folks want to hang on for a second we'll do just that Okay, let me put this one together, and uh, we'll take a look at them side by side. Okay, folks, well, now we have two. So the first one, Jane's Room, is a two millimeter basswood plywood. Uh, I got that at Amazon, and I'll drop a link down in the description. The uh, second one, Dave's Shop, is a five millimeter Luon plywood, uh, which is a hardwood. It's used for uh, flooring underlayment. Uh, a little less common than the basswood for laser projects, but it is a really good wood for laser projects. I got that locally, and I'll drop a link for that as well. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities for these. Uh, I've seen all sorts of switch covers. I'm sure you have as well. The second one works better for my switch because of the thickness of the wood, and it gives a better seal around the wall. So just... Uh, Get the, get the measurements that you need, give it a try, and if you have questions, let me know down in the comments, and I'll be glad to help out. Uh, if you have questions about anything I've got posted, or any general laser or light burn questions, I'm glad to try to answer those as well. So I really appreciate you folks watching. It does help the channel grow, and the questions and comments not only help me as a newbie, uh, but they help all the folks watching, and that's a good thing, and I appreciate it. So just check back often for new videos. You folks take care, and we'll see y'all next time. Thank you.